In a previous video, we went over the overall structure and organization of the neurological physical exam. If you recall, we broke the exam into six major pieces that you can remember using the mnemonic MC Mrs. G. And what those letters stand for is here for your reference. In this video, I will go into more detail about how to organize the first two pieces of the exam, the mental status and the cranial nerve exams. In the next video, I'll go into more details about the remaining four pieces of the exam. So let's take a look at the mental status exam first. This is the one part of the neuro exam where you may not be expected to perform everything, but have to use your judgment based on how coherent the patient is and what your team and attendings expect. There are so many questions to ask that it may feel overwhelming at first. However, there are several strategies you can use to make the mental status exam easier. The first strategy is to carry a checklist of questions with you that you can refer to while interviewing each patient. Many neurology departments have their own lists with their own preferred questions that you may wish to carry with you. If you're expected to perform the exam without referring to notes, don't fret. Just like the overall neuro exam, the mental status exam can be broken down into smaller chunks for you to remember. Each question on the mental status exam is designed to test a specific function and location in the brain. There are five main functions that are important to test, and you can choose which specific questions to ask to test these functions. I like to remember these five main functions with a mnemonic oral V, you know, the toothbrush, in which O stands for orientation, R stands for recall, A stands for attention, L stands for language, and V stands for visual spatial. Each function is associated with a specific region or regions of the brain and has common questions that are used to test it. Let's go through them one by one. Orientation tests global brain function, and I like to assess this by asking the patient the following four questions. What is your name? What is the date? Where are you? And who is the current president? Next, recall test the temporal lobe. And I like to test this by asking the patient to remember three simple words. For example, apple, pen, and chair. I test immediate recall by asking the patient to immediately repeat the words to me, but I also tell the patient to keep these words in his or her memory and ask them to repeat these words to me at the end of the mental status exam. The next brain function I like to assess is attention which focuses on the frontal lobe. A good test for this is to ask the patient to state the months of the year backwards. Next is language, which tests the dominant temporal lobe. I like to test language using three tests. First, point to three objects, such as a watch, pen, and shoe, and ask the patient to tell you what those objects are. Second, Ask the patient to read a simple sentence out loud. And lastly, ask the patient to write a simple sentence for you. Finally, you should test visual spatial function, which assesses the non-dominant, so non-dominant temporal lobe. I like to ask the patient to draw a clock face with all the numbers and to put the hands of the clock at 120. With that, you've tested five important functions of the brain and already have an idea about how well specific areas of the brain are functioning. There are many other questions you can ask, but most of them will fall into one of the major categories that we have just gone over with our mnemonic oral V. After the mental status exam, the next piece of the neuro exam I like to perform is the cranial nerve exam. In practice, you may find it easier to approach this by anatomy rather than by cranial nerve number. I like to go in this order, eyes, ears, mouth, rest of the face, neck, and lastly, shoulders. Let's start with the eyes, where you should perform the following three tests. Visual acuity with your vision chart, extraocular muscle movements, and remember you're supposed to have the patient move his or her eyes in a H pattern to test all the muscles, and lastly, visual fields using your fingers. With these three tests, you have already taken care of cranial nerves two through six. Next, move on to the ears. You can hit your tuning fork 
and place the vibrating device next to each ear to assess hearing. And this is testing cranial nerve eight. Next, focus on the mouth. Have your patient open their mouth and say, ah, and have them stick out their tongue. And that's cranial nerves nine, 10, and 12, all in one easy remember step. After testing the eyes, mouth, and ears, you can test sensation and movement of the rest of the face. Test sensation by assessing the forehead, cheek, and chin on both sides. Remember that there are two major sensory pathways you should test. First carries pinprick and temperature, and the second carries vibrational sense. I like to use a cold tuning fork to test temperature and a vibrating tuning fork to test vibration sense at each of these three points. Next, Test facial movements by asking the patient to perform three tasks. Raise his eyebrows, puff out his cheeks, and smile. Finally, move down below the face to the neck and shoulder. To assess the neck, place your hand on the patient's cheek and ask the patient to turn his or her head against the resistance. Do this for the other side. All of this covers cranial nerve 7. Finally, to assess cranial nerve 11, place your hands on the patient's shoulders and have him or her shrug her shoulders against resistance. That's it. Believe it or not, you have just gone over every cranial nerve from 2 to 12. Remember that cranial nerve 1 is smell, which is usually not tested, but may be useful for certain patients. So in this video, we've gone over ways to organize and structure the mental status and cranial nerve exams of the neuro exam. Now let's get to our take home points. The mental status exam tests five important brain functions that you can remember with the mnemonic oral V. Each function is carried out by a specific region of the brain. And lastly, the cranial nerve exam may be easier to perform by anatomy. One specific way to approach it is to go in the following order, eyes, ears, mouth, the rest of the face, neck, and shoulders. Thanks for watching.